Hey guys, my name is Frank, and this is the Pothon Programming Video Log. Have you ever wanted to make a game in which the player could access different levels using doors? Then you're in the right place. I'm going to show you how to load JSON level data into your JavaScript and HTML5 game, so stay tuned. In this video, I'm going to show you how to create level data files using JSON, how to load those files into your JavaScript game engine, how to populate your game screen with level data, and finally, how to use interactive game objects such as doors to load specific levels. Don't forget that there are a lot of other cool features in the source code like the animation class that I won't be talking about, so be sure to check out the source code and working example linked in the description below after you watch the video, and comment if you have any questions. So the first thing I want to talk about is how to actually create level data. So I have my JSON file open here for area zero, which is the first area that you find yourself in in this game world. So if I come up here and refresh my page, the first one it's going to load is area zero. So the tiny closet. So basically what I store in my level data is just the dimensions of the level, the message in the top left corner, the number of doors, I don't know if I mentioned the background color, but I store that too, as well as the height of the floor. So that's everything you see here. I've got the message, I've got the background color, I've got the height of the floor. So when I jump up and down, I'm actually colliding with the floor there. And I got the dimensions of the level and I have a list of doors inside of that level. And those doors have uh, what level they're gonna take me to, their X position and the position that my player character is gonna end up standing on when she's transported to that new level, so to speak. So JSON is a really easy and natural way to write level data files for your JavaScript game simply because it basically is JavaScript format, give or take. It's basically, it feels the same as writing JavaScript. So if you write JavaScript, you're already natural at writing JSON. And in addition, you have the fantastic json.parse method, which will take this and parse it, this text, it'll take this text and parse it directly into a usable JavaScript object inside of your JavaScript logic. So you can take this text, parse it, have a workable JavaScript object, and have access to all of these different values right inside of your code. So this is a really great and natural way to just store your level data for an HTML5 and JavaScript game. So here's my code for level one or area one. And I'm not gonna go into the other areas, but this is area zero, it has one door. If I look here, this is area zero. This is area one and it has three doors. So when I walk through this door, it's gonna take me to area one. And as you can see, it has three doors, one, two, three. And I have three doors in my doors array inside of my level data file. So pretty cool, and you could do a lot of cool stuff like this. So for example, if I wanna change the name of the first level, the tiny closet, all I have to do is come into my level data and change the name to hello. And that will be the new name of this level that you'll see in this upper left corner. So since I'm loading these files, I don't have to refresh my browser. It's gonna automatically fetch the data from the server when I walk in, so I don't have to refresh the screen to get that hello to pop up. The server is automatically gonna detect, well, it's not gonna detect anything, but it's just gonna load this file and it'll load the newest version of this file every time. So when I update, update this to the old text that was in there, the tiny closet and save, and I walk in and out, now it's back to the tiny closet. So that is how to create level data and a little bit about why JSON is a really good format for use with HTML5 and JavaScript games. Next up, I'm gonna talk about loading level data. So this area zero.json that we were just looking at, we're gonna have to get this JSON out of this file and load it into our game logic. So inside of the game object, inside of my game logic, I've got a function called load that I use to load my JSON files up and I'm gonna to try to find it right now. There it is, load area. So the load area function basically does two things. It takes a URL that I want to load. So say I wanna load uh, that area zero.json file or maybe even the area one dot, any file that I wanna load. And I have more maps than just area zero and area one because I've got quite a few different levels here. Well, actually not quite a few. I, I think I just have 
four. So that's really not that much. But basically, it takes a URL of one of the maps that I have to load into the game engine. And it also takes a callback function. So what happens when I call load area is I hand a URL of a file that I want it to load. It creates a request object from an XML HTTP request object. It asks the server to open that file. And all this time, I am just freezing the game logic. I'm not executing my game loop at all. I'm waiting, I'm in a paused state. And when finally the server returns the information I asked for being my level file, my level data file, I'm going to call the callback function. So inside of this ready state change event handler function, I'm basically gonna say, did I get back my data? Is the status equal to 200? So did everything go okay? And did I get the response text back from inside of my JSON file? If so, then I'm going to parse that JSON into a usable JavaScript object inside of game.area, and I'm gonna call my callback function. And all that callback function is gonna have inside of it is whatever I want. So in this case, for this example, the callback function is going to have inside of it all the code that it needs to populate the screen with the new levels level data. And I'm going to talk about that in the next segment, so stay tuned. Now that we have loaded our JSON file into our JavaScript game engine via the load area function and its internal ready state change event handler function, we are parsing the JavaScript or we're parsing the JSON file into a JavaScript object and storing it in game.area. Inside of the callback is going to be what we need to do to populate our game screen. So if I come down here to my game loop or down to initialize here, when I first start up the game, so say I refresh the screen and this pops up, say I come up here, I refresh the screen. When I first start up my game, I'm going to call game.load area. And I'm going to hand in the first level that I want to load, which is area zero.json. And I'm going to hand in a callback function, which is going to populate my game screen with the location of where the player sprite needs to be, the location of the door sprites. And that's pretty much it because this is a really simple example. There's really nothing going on besides this sprite and this door sprite. So that's it. So the game.reset function is going to have all that information in it. So if I scroll up here, to the reset function inside of my game object. This takes care of taking all of that JSON that we just parsed into the game.area variable, and it takes that information and it converts it to stuff that we can actually use in our game engine. So the first thing we do is we're gonna take all of our door objects inside the doors array of our JSON. And if I come up here to my JSON file, <clears throat> I'll just show you that doors array. This is the doors array in the JSON. So when I first parse my file into the JavaScript object game.area, the objects inside of that array are gonna look just like this. But I can't use these inside of my game. I have to have an actual game object. So I convert that to the class door, just like this, really simple. I replace each one of those JSON objects with an actual game class called door. And I just set that up to equal the JSON doors value. So for example, the X position, I would just get from door.x. Uh, I would set it the Y position up to be the game area dot floor position minus 32, which is the height of my door sprite, minus three, which is just my offset for the floor. If you look down here, I have the player character standing directly on the floor and three pixels up is where the bottom of the door is gonna be. So that's what that's about there. Um, I have the doors area, which is just a URL to the next level that the door brings you to. And I have door.newx, and remember new x was where the player ends up in the new loaded level. So I'm replacing my old JSON object, which looks like this. My old JSON door object, which just looks like this, with a new game object, a new door game object with all the values of that old JSON door object inside of it. So that's one of the things I'm doing here. 
Another one of the things I'm doing is I'm setting up the player character and called her Dominique because I'm putting people I know inside of my my game programs now. And I just set Dominique's Y position up to equal the game area dot floor position minus the half height of the Dominique sprite. And that's going to position the Y position of the Dominique sprite inside of the game level. Also, I set the X velocity to zero. So if I'm loading a level and the reset function is called when I'm walking, I'm moving. I don't want my velocity to carry over into the next level because you slide a little bit when you stop. So I'm just setting velocity equal to zero. So when you come out in the next level, you're not moving. And then at the bottom of the reset function here, I'm just setting up the display canvases to equal, or actually just the buffer canvas to equal the dimensions specified in the JSON level object. And that's just going to take care of the different dimensions of my levels because obviously I have like a really big level, medium level, got a small level, and I've got this narrow level. So that takes care of resetting all the different dimensions and the aspect ratio of my different levels. And that's it. For this really simple example here, I don't really need to do much to convert the JSON level data to actual usable data inside of my JavaScript game engine. Everything else that we do is taken care of when we parse our JSON file into the game.area object. So for example, the message that I display in the top left corner here of every level, for example, this one is the passageway, the message value is just going to be transferred from this JSON into my game.area object. So I don't even have to do anything to convert that. It just automatically is converted to that value with the JSON.parse method. So that's maybe not the most simple explanation of what's going on here, but that is how to populate the game, the game screen or take your JSON data and convert it to stuff that you can actually use in your game. In this last part of the video, I'm just gonna talk about doors. So what goes into the actual door game object? So I'm gonna come in here and check out my door class and there's nothing to it. As you can see, it just has an X and a Y value has an area which is just the URL to the area it's going to take you or the new level it's going to take you to. The new X position, which is the new X position of the player when she moves to the next level. It's going to put her at a new position in that level. So that's what that is. We already talked about that though. Inside we have also an animation object. Now the animation object takes care of the cool little door opening graphic effect that you see and I'm not going to go over that because I've already done a tutorial on how to do animations but I have updated this so check out the source code to see the the updates it's really simple if you are using my animation object approach to animating stuff in your game check that out but basically this is it just a simple class a simple prototype nothing cool happens here all the cool stuff happens inside of the game logic so what happens when my player character steps on a door? Obviously it opens, and if I press a certain key, the down key, I can move to a new level. So let's check out the code that makes that happen. I'm gonna come down to my game logic. Do, do, do. I'm gonna come to the engine, and inside the engine we have the loop, we have some code to handle user input, handling what happens if I press the different controller keys and what happens if I don't. I'm gonna come down to here where I loop through the doors. So I'm gonna loop through every door in the level. I am going to get a reference to each door that I'm, I'm looping through. As I'm looping through all the doors, I'm gonna get a reference to each one. And then I'm going to check the position of the Dominique sprite against the position of the door. So if uh, the Dominique Sprite's X position is greater than the left side of the door, and it's less than the right side of the door. Then I'm going to set the animation mode of the door to play, and that's going to, and I shouldn't be telling you this because I said I wasn't going to explain anything about it, but it's going to set it to play, and that's just going to make the sprite play forward. That's going to open the door. When I move off, the door is going to close. 
So if I am pressing the down key when I'm over the door, then I am going to load the next level. It's as simple as that. All I'm doing is looping through my doors. I'm checking to see if my player sprite is standing on the door. If I press the down key while I'm standing on a door, then I'm going to set the Dominique sprite to the door dot new X value, which is going to set her at where she needs to be on the X axis in the new level that it gets loaded. Whatever that might be depends on what I set that value to in the door object. And I'm going to load the area. So I'm just going to load the area stored in door.area, which is just the URL of the level that the door takes you to. And the callback I'm going to hand to load area is just game.reset. And I already went over game.reset, but I feel like I didn't do a great job of it. So I'm going to go down and try to explain a little better since I am talking about doors here. So here is the reset function. And I'm just going to talk about populating these doors again. So I'm just looping through all the door objects from the JSON that haven't been converted to actual door objects yet. Remember I showed you that door class. Right now, they are just this. They just look like this. They just have a value called area, which is just the URL. They have an X position, and they have a new X position where they're going to send the Dominique Sprite to when she enters the new level. So here, all I'm doing when I reset the level to the new level data that just got loaded is I'm going to loop through all of these JSON door objects, and I'm going to replace them inside the same doors array inside my game.area. Remember, that's where I'm loading all my JSON into. I'm going to set all of those JSON door objects equal to new door class objects. And that's going to allow them to be animated. It's going to allow them to have a Y position instead of just an X position, like the original JSON door had. And that's it. In this video, I showed you how to create level data files using JSON, how to load them, and how to use them with interactive doors. If you want to get a closer look at how to write, load, and use JSON in your project, check out my other video on working with JSON that I have linked in the description below. Also, don't forget to like the video if you thought it was helpful. My main goal in making these videos is to help people learn how to make games and provide good source code for them to practice with. In order to do that, my videos have to get good reviews, so if you can think of anything to help improve my videos, leave your thoughts in the comments below. And as always, guys, thanks for watching, and have a great day.